Hi guys and welcome back to a new video. In today's video, I will go through what are, in my opinion, the top 10 best weapons to either farm or craft in order to make a lot of gold in patch 10.1.5 and in general in World of Warcraft Dragonflight. So I already made a similar video more than a year ago, but with all the recent changes and also with all the new items that have been added into the game with Dragonflight, I think it's important for me to provide an update on this top 10. For this top 10, what I did is I mainly took into consideration the sell rate of each item, meaning how fast they sell on a daily basis, the value regionally of these different items, how easy it is to farm or get these different items, and finally, the uniqueness and why people would actually put a lot of investment into getting these different items. I will probably make a part two uh, to this video because there are so many interesting weapons in the game that you can farm or again craft in order to make some gold. So let me know in the comments if you would like a part two to this top 10. Also, before I start diving into this top 10, I think it's important to mention that there is now cross realm trading that you can do for free. And so it means that, of course, some of the different markets, especially crafted items and very easy items to farm, are probably going to tank a little bit, but it's also a really good opportunity for you, for instance, if you want to farm some very expensive transmog items and weapons, and that unfortunately on New Realm, they're not selling for a lot of gold. What you can do is simply take them, transfer them on another realm, and like that, you will then be able to sell them on this other realm. And if you want the gold on your main realm, you can still then transfer back the gold, and like that, you will have everything on your main realm. Okay, so let's start with our number 10. And at number 10, I'm going to have a weapon that I think a lot of you are now very familiar with. And this is the Venom River. As you can see, this is already a weapon that I'm wearing right now. And this is a really nice and unique appearance. This item has been added into the game in patch 10.0.7. And is part of the different ancient crafts from Zulgaru. So in order to craft this item, you will need to get the plants. The plants are BOE, so it means that you can either buy them on the auction house or decide to farm them yourself. In order to farm the plants, you will need to first unlock this achievement right here, the Relics of a Fallen Empire, and then you will need to go in Zulgarub, the heroic version from Cataclysm, and here you will have to do a couple of things in order to then open some boxes, and inside the boxes you will have a small chance at getting the plants for the Venom River. I made a full guide explaining exactly what you need to do and now you can farm this weapon, so I would invite you to watch this guide if you want to farm the plants yourself. As you can see, for instance, right now you have some of the plants that are available for even 30,000 gold on European realms and 20,000 gold on North American realms. And keep in mind, again, what you can do now that cross realm training has been enabled is to simply go here, check on which realms exactly these different plants are available, just transfer some gold on this realm, buy the plants and then transfer back the plants where your character with blacksmithing is and then you can start crafting these different weapons. When it comes to the sell rate and the value, so the sell rate for this weapon is extremely good. It's 0.34, which means that you will sell a couple a day most likely. And when it comes to the value right now, it's 25,000 gold on average on European realms and 47,000 gold on average on European realms. I'm only putting this weapon at number 10 because with cross realm training, a lot of people who have this craft are crafting a bunch of them and then selling them across all the different realms in their region. And so as you can imagine, probably in one week from now, the value is going to tank a little bit. But I still think this is a really decent item to have up on the auction house and it sells really well. So definitely something that if you want, you should take and then you will probably make some gold with it. After that, at number nine, we're gonna have the Chromatic Sword. So the Chromatic Sword is this really nice weapon that has a unique glow around it. As you can see, there are different colors and everything. This weapon is very famous because it was removed from the game for a long period of time and it was selling for millions and millions of gold. And then I believe just before Legion or during Legion, it was reintroduced into the game. Basically, in order for you to get this weapon, you will have to kill this rare right here, Scale Betty. Scale Betty is located just here in the Cape of Stranglehorn inside the Crystal Vein Mine. 
And as you can see, you can just come and usually will be located just here. So you won't always find him because a lot of people are farming this rare in order to get the chromatic sword. So what I would recommend you to do is to just leave maybe one character here and then sometimes during the day just logging, see if he's up or not. And then like that, you will have a chance at killing him and hopefully getting the sword. But keep in mind, this is a very, very low drop chance. So unfortunately, many times you won't be able to get the sword. So when it comes to the value and the sell rate, the sell rate on this item is 0.03, which is really good for an item worth that much. And as you can see, the value on average on European realms is 140 to 184,000 gold and 150 to 221,000 gold. So you will most likely be able to sell it for a lot of gold when you manage to get your hands on this weapon. After that, at number 8, we will have all the new crafts from Max Kramas that have been added into the game in patch 10 for 1.5. So here, I'm just putting all of them under this number 8 because it's still very early to determine what are the best ones and to see how the market will evolve. I think it's safe to say that for the next few weeks, you'll still be able to probably make some gold with most of these items. But after that, really, it's probably going to be very similar to Zugarub and some of them might not be as relevant as they are right now. So in order to start crafting all these different items, you will need to unlock a few things, these different achievements right here, the Words of the Dread Citadel and the Memory of Scholomans in order to unlock the ancient secrets within Naxxramas. And then you will have to unlock this vendor right here, Zaket Skull Smash. And finally, after gathering some of the currencies that you will be able to get in Naxxramas and in Scholomans and Stratom, you will be able to purchase these different slime-covered scrolls. And each time you will purchase one of these different scrolls, you will then receive one of these random ancient plants, recipes, uh, and it's not linked to your profession. So sometimes you will get things that you cannot use, and sometimes you will get things that you can use. And like that, you will have a chance at then crafting all these new weapons uh, that can, again, sell for quite a lot of gold. I would say that, in my opinion, the most interesting ones right now are going to be the following ones. So the different shields, the Death Campbell, the Face of Doom, and the Plague Belcher. Then you have a few, like, I guess, weapons that are also interesting, but personally, I haven't really started to craft all of them because it's just too much work and I was not interested in doing so. But as you can see, you really have a lot of these different items that you can craft and probably that you will be able to sell for quite a lot of gold. Keep in mind, there is not only blacksmithing weapon, you also have, for instance, here, as you can see, with level working, you have the Nerubian Persuader. With engineering, you have a few weapons as well, with inscription as well. So just try to see which are the ones that sell for the best price and then try to target these different items. Also very similar to the Venom River, all the different plants and recipes you will need are BOE. So it means that you will be able to buy them from the auction house directly. As you can see here, again, some are very, very cheap. And so what I would do if I were you, is simply target the best ones, go on the different realms where they're selling for a very, very cheap price, and then you will be able to then start crafting all these items and make gold with these different items. So when it comes to the sell rate and the value, on most of them, I would say the sell rate is anywhere between 0 0.04 to 0 0.9 or 0 0.09 or something like that. So really good overall. And when it comes to the value, for instance, on this shield, as you can see, it's going to be 89,000 gold on average. On When it comes to the sell rate and the value, the sell rate on most of these new items is anywhere between 0 0.04 to 0 0.08 or sometimes even more than that. And of course, keep in mind, it's probably going to keep decreasing because the hype around this new patch is going to fade away at some point. But when it comes to the value, it's still really good on many of these items. As you can see, for instance, the Death Gamble is 89,000 gold on average on European realms and 99,000 gold on average on North American realms. Again, keep in mind, with cross realm trading, probably a lot of these weapons is going to crash in value because a lot of people are starting to crap them everywhere. But it's safe to say that for at least a few more days or weeks, you will be able probably to make some gold easily with these new weapons. After that, at number 7, we will have one weapon from World of Janeiro, and this is the Blackrock Bulwark. So this shield is a world drop, so it means that basically you will be able to get it from almost any source related to World of the Janeiro. And this is something that is a unique appearance, even though it shares 
a very similar appearance to another shield that you can get on Illidan in the Black Temple. But still, this is a weapon that a lot of people are still buying on the auction house, and when you manage to get your hands on it, probably you will end up to make a lot of gold. So again, this is a world drop, so it means that there are no really like guaranteed way to get this item, but there are a few places where you will have a better chance, let's say, at getting this item. The first one is by doing some group farms in this part of Tadador. So here really you just want to come with probably like a group of five people or two groups of four people and kill all the mobs that are around again and again in order to have a chance at getting this wall drop. And then you also have one dungeon from World of the Janeiro that is pretty good in order to farm this item. And this is the, the Iron Dog. So basically when you're entering the dungeon, you will be able very easily to start killing a lot of the different mobs that are available before and even after. And so what you can do is simply kill a bunch of mobs again and again and again. And sometimes you will have a chance at getting this shield. When it comes to the value and the sell rate, the sell rate for this item is on average 0.014, which is again, not so bad considering the rarity and the value of this shield. The original average value on European realms is 990,000 gold to 1.1 million. And then on North American realms, it's 700,000 gold. So as you can see, most of the time you will be able to make a lot of gold when you manage to get it. But again, this is a very, very rare drop and it will probably take you quite a lot of time before you get it. After that, we're going to have a weapon from Battle for Azeroth. And this is something that I already mentioned in a couple of recent videos. This is the Plundered Blade of Northern King. So as you can see, this is a really cool sword. This is a unique appearance. And this weapon can be obtained when doing the different island expeditions from Battle for Azeroth. So this one is honestly not so difficult to get. What you want to do is run a bunch of the different island expeditions in solo mode or with some friends in mythic difficulty. And then you will receive a currency and then you can use this currency in order to buy some of these different uh, salvages. And one of them, the Jorundal, has a really, really good chance of getting one of these Pruner Blade of Northern Kings at least. It's around 30% drop chance. So again, what you want to do is run all these different island expeditions, get a lot of the currency, and then wait for this salvage to be available because basically the vendor resetting the salvage each week has different type of salvage available. It's up to four of them. And so you will need to wait for this one to be available, buy it, and hopefully after opening a couple of them, you will be able to get one or more of these different blades. When it comes to the sell rate and the value for this weapon, the average sell rate on European realms is 0 0.138, which is really, really good. And then the average value is 75,000 gold, and then the North American realms is 90,000 gold. After that, we're going to have another craft, this time from Mist of Pandaria, and this is the Lionheart Executioner Reborn. So this weapon is very famous. It was originally accessible in the Burning Crusade, and then you can now craft this Reborn version that you can sell on the auction house with the Blacksmithing profession from Mist of Pandaria. So this item is really interesting because basically in order to craft it, as you can see, you will need each time to have the previous version, and all these different versions require you to get some of these lightning steel ingots. In total, you will need 30 of them. And these are daily cooldowns. So it means that you can only craft one of them per character per day. So it means that you can craft only one of these panel blade once per month per character. So definitely something that is not super easy to craft. And this is why even though there is cross realm trading now, it's still something that is probably, probably going to remain very valuable even mount for years from now. Also, it's important to mention that in order to unlock all the different crafts to start crafting the different lightning steel ingots, you will need to do a couple of steps. I explain everything in this video and I will share the link in the description. So I would invite you to look at this video if you want to understand how you can start crafting these different ingots and this weapon. When it comes to the value and the sell rate, the average sell rate on European realms is 0.05 for this weapon, which is really, really good. When it comes to the value, it's 114,000 gold to 133,000 gold on European realms and 152 to 339,000 gold on North American realms. 
as you can see, you will definitely be able to sell it for a lot of gold once you manage to craft it. After that, at number four, we're gonna have two weapons from the Burning Crusade, the Exodar Life Staff and Hope Ender. These two weapons can drop from Doomlord Kazakh. This is a world boss that it will be located in the Elfire Peninsula, just here in the throne of Kill Jaden. In order to find this world boss and have a chance at getting some of this loot, basically you will have to go there and find the world boss. He will spawn every three to four hours on every realm and you can kill him multiple times a day or per weeks and each time you will receive two pieces of loot. So the easiest way in my opinion is to simply have one character that you can log in very easily and that will camp this location and like that you will be able to get some of these kills and hopefully some of these weapons or sometimes you can also just travel to Thralmar and then go to the throne of Kill Jaden and hopefully you will be able to find the world boss. Keep in mind each time you kill this boss you will receive two of these different loots and the two only ones that are really interesting are the two weapons but sometimes you can also get over pieces of loot that you can sell for an additional gold on the auction house and keep in mind sometimes you can get both weapons at the same time. So the sell rate on average on European Rails for Opender is 0.04 and for the Exoder Life Staff is 0.063, which is really, really good. Then as you can see for the staff, which is the best items out of the two, the original value on European Rails is 67 to 76,000 gold and 46 to 34,000 gold on average on North American Rails. After that, we're gonna have another very interesting item that has been added into the game in patch 10.0.7 and this is part of the different ancient secrets from Zulgarub and this is the Warblades of the Akari Reborn. So as you can see, this is a bind to Blizzard account weapon so it means that you cannot sell it directly on the auction house but what's interesting is that you can sell the plants directly on the auction house and as this is something that people won't be able to buy directly from the auction house, most likely people will buy the plants in order to then be able to craft these different Warblades. So the plants are these ones right here and these are really, really good and they sell super well. Also in patch 10.1.7, we will get some new achievements and one of them is to craft the Warblades of the Akari Reborn, which makes this weapon even more interesting. So here it's very similar to the plants for the Venom River. What you want to do is first unlock the ancient secrets within Zogarub and then you want to farm the currency in order to open these different Gurubashi tributes and inside you will have a very small chance at getting the ancient plants for the Warblades of the Akari Reborn. Keep in mind, you will also have a chance at getting for instance the plants for the Venom River and for some other weapons and armor pieces that can still sell on the auction house for quite a lot of gold. But really the one you want are the plants for the Warblades of the Akari Reborn. When it comes to the sell rate and the value, the average sell rate on European realms is 0.018, which is pretty good. And again, I'm sure they will have an increase with patch 10.1.7 and the new achievement for this item. The value originally on European realms is 300 to 363,000 gold, which is extremely good, and 400 to 700,000 gold on North American realms. After that, at number two, we will have another weapon that I already mentioned in a couple of videos, and this is the Varut's Guillotine. So this is a cool looking sword, this is a unique appearance, and you will be able to get it when killing some of the mobs that are available in this part of Zeret Mortis right here. So they drop from almost any mobs in this part. So again, this is a very rare drop, and I would say the best way to farm it is by simply killing all the mobs that are around and waiting for them to reset or having a group and killing all of them together and hopefully like that you will be able to get this sword after a certain point. When it comes to the average sell rate and value on European realms it's going to be 0.018 which is pretty good and then the value is 847,000 gold on average and on North American realms it's 675,000 gold so as you can see really good weapon. And finally, at number one, we're going to have some weapons that I'm sure you're going to be very confused about, but still, I think these are extremely, extremely good. So these deployment weapons are from Pyrelands, and these are BOE boss drops, so it means that you will be able to get them by killing the different boss, and you will then be able to sell them on the auction house. There is the Ward of the Red Widow right here. This is a shield. 
Then you have the Volcano Spike, as you can see, this uh, one-handed sword. And finally, on Shannox, you also have this Goblet of Anger. So all these different weapons are very interesting because basically, when you do this raid in a Time Walking difficulty, they will have a 415 high level, and you will also be able to upgrade them similar to normal raid BOEs from Dragonflight. So as in Dragonflight, we don't have BOE weapons that you can buy from the auction house that have a really good high level. These are the only weapons available. And again, you will be able to upgrade them. So definitely something that a lot of people are interested in buying. And what's also very interesting is the fact that the Time Walking event is only happening two or three times a year. And it's only available for one week. So it means that the capacity that you have in order to farm these different items is very limited. And this is why they are selling for a lot of gold. So right now, unfortunately, the Time Walking event is not up. But the next time it will be up will be in September, as you can see here. It's not guaranteed that these different weapons will still sell for a million gold each because we will be pretty closer to the new raid. But still something that you really want to keep in mind because you will probably still be able to make a lot of gold if you manage to get some of them. So on average, each of these weapons are right now selling for at least a million gold. And as you can see, myself, I've been able to sell them for a million gold each. So as you can see, for instance, for the Volcano Spike, I've been able to sell it once for 1 million. And then another time here, for some reason, it's not counted. But as you can see, it was more recent. And I know that some people are still selling them for around a million gold pretty easily. So that's pretty much it for today's video. I really hope it will help you make some gold with all these different weapons. Keep in mind, there are so many other weapons that I haven't mentioned that are still really good. And this is why I'll probably make a part two to this video. I will be back very soon with more guides and more videos. And in the meantime, I wish you all a great weekend. Bye.